Well, we're supposed to charge you 40 cents. And I said, well, the last time I was in here, it was 18 cents. Well, and he said, okay. And he sold it to me for 18 cents. I said, well, give me twice as much as <laughs> okay. and, uh So I'm gonna, you, you can see it's glossy on both sides. My, I believe this is used for brochures. And I'll pass this around. And again, uh, one thing, I like this better for the super fine patterns. Because it's thinner, you don't have to transfer as much heat. And since you don't have to transfer as much heat, you don't have to put as much pressure with the heat iron. And so you have less spread. And you can get a little finer pitch with this. Okay, so here, so if you go into this, don't ruin it for everybody. Don't go in and say, oh, it's 40 cents, okay. Go in and say, well, the last time I was in here, it was 18 cents. <laughs> and try to get it for that, okay? <laughs> All right, next foil, please, Paul. Okay. Now here's the basic steps, and uh, we'll actually do this in a minute. So you cut the board blank. I've already done that. I've got the board blank. Here, open it. Okay, here's a board blank, and if you look at it, you can see there's a big fingerprint on it. Ooh, bad. Well, we're going to, the, the next step is to clean the board and we'll go through that process. Okay, and then after you clean the board, in fact, it's time to turn on the iron. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh, a lot of the new irons. Just clean it with soap and water? A lot? No, no. No, we're going to go through that. I'm not going to go through the, the step. When we do the demo, I'll talk about the individual things. Now I just want you to get familiar with what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to clean the board. Then we're going to use an iron to, cop to transfer the copper pattern. Then we're going to remove the paper backing that's on the transfer. That's the piece of paper. We're going to inspect it and make sure we got the whole pattern transferred. Then we're going to actually etch it. We're going to use a sponge method, which uses very little etching. We're going to inspect it again. Then we're going to use acetone to remove the, to the, the toner. Uh, we're going to drill the holes. No, we're not going to drill the holes. I've got a drilled board, and we'll just switch boards here. Uh, then we clean the, uh, clean the other side of the board. And then we'll align the front silk pattern, and we'll transfer that pattern. And then we'll remove its paper back in, and then we'll do a final inspect. Uh, why do you drill before you do both sides? Because uh, even though some of this material is somewhat translucent, it is actually easier to line up the holes to your pattern. Otherwise, I, what I will do at that time is I'll, go, I'll turn this on and have a bright light. <coughs> and I will align the holes to the pattern that I'm putting on it. And even on a double-sided board, you'll see here, I do the same thing, but I don't drill all the holes. Okay, we'll talk double, at, right at the end, we'll talk about double-sided boards. Yeah, they're a little fine little. pitch MSP430 board. How, how many years of experience before you can actually make that work? You can do, do you can, I could give you that pattern, and uh, you could probably, I'll be, I wouldn't do it, with, I'd give you three patterns, and I, you would, you would be successful before, you might be successful on the first one. Okay. Now, the, the, the problem that you will have is when they're that fine, and you get your soldering iron on it, it doesn't Reach. take much for those things to lift. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay? Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, it, it's, there's more to it than just making the board. Yeah. And, and related to that, why, why do you etch before drilling on the first side? Why do I etch? Oh, uh, okay, well, I... You don't need to. It's so simple. You don't need to. Well, my concern is if you're if if, if, if the amount of material that you're leaving is is relatively small compared to the size of the hole, it seems like the drill itself could lift the copper off. It could, could uh, break it away. Okay, I'm going to talk. Uh, that's a good good topic. I don't want to okay. go to it right now because I do want to show a potential problem because uh, we're going to talk about drills. Okay. Please bring that up at, when we talk about drills because. Uh, there is something I don't want to forget to tell you guys about that. Okay. All right. Um, do, 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 clean board. Okay. This is one more. Now let's look at how, how a double-sided board is. Exactly. Yeah. And right now we're going to see this slide again. 
I don't, all I want to, t to really sh say here is it takes a lot, it takes an extra six steps. And there's a couple of steps in there that are kickers. Uh, they're not hard to do once you've done, you've done them, but it takes a little getting experience to, okay? Uh, so if I gave you your three patterns, and they were double-sided boards, you would probably get it on your second or third one. The first one you would go, oh man, I got the holes over here and the holes over there, and it was supposed to be on. <laughs> but but once you figure that out, and I'm gonna we'll talk about how to do that, it, it works pretty good. Okay. All right. I think the next one is a stop. Okay. All right. Now some of these steps are gonna take some time, so. Instead of wasting time, I'm going to go through other foils while we're sitting here waiting things to cool down or whatever it's going to take. All right. The first thing. Okay. I think your iron shut off. Yeah. That's that's the other thing. The new modern irons uh, have automatic turnoffs on them, and they're very very frustrating. Uh, I get mine at Salvation Army. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you can buy an old one. Uh, that doesn't have the automatic turn off for this, it's probably it. Now the back side is the one with the traces on it, just to make sure everybody is aware of it. Okay, so what I, for this particular board, because we had the four holes in the corner, which were kind of like, oh my gosh, I didn't put them in when I first started out, they're kind of tight to the edge. So what I did is I included the, the edge, board edge definition, I left it on. Okay. Normally, I put my traces a little further away from the, or the edge of the board definition, and I actually use a sander to sand through that, so that that's kind of like how I know I'm square. I use it as my way to make sure my board is square. All right. Okay. So now, at home, at this step. You know, I would probably just do this at the kitchen sink because this step is just cleaning the board, okay? So to try to, to um, uh, get around that, I, I put a coffee can of cold water from the other room, and we're going to pretend that that's the rinse, all right? Uh, in actuality, I would just do what I'm about to do, and then I'd hold it under the rinse and rinse it dry and then pat it dry. Now, the first step I do is I take Barkeeper's Helper. It's a very light, very nice, uh, not, a, not aggressive, abrasive cleaner. And I put a little on there. Okay? You know, everybody see what I'm doing here? All right. Now wet my finger. And I kind of smush it down, put a little bit more in there. And then I just cause it, create a slur. And I just rub that down all on the board. Okay. And I use my, you know, I'm using a bare finger, so you say, well, what about grease? Well, we're going to handle that in a, in a few minutes. The main thing I'm trying to do now is, is do a slightly abrasive clean that uh, gets rid of all of the gross defects. You're this saying, is. You're saying something like Comet or what have you is a little too. No, you dumb. can use it, but. This is good stuff to have around the house, and it's an oxalic acid, which will eat iron also, so yeah. neutralize it on an oxide. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I really like this stuff. Okay. I guess that's what it really about. Yeah, it's not a chlorine based. It's yeah, a, yeah no, it's, not it's a different. It's an oxalic acid, so it comes in handy, like you say, to do a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. Have, uh, it is dangerous though if you eat it. So don't eat it. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> want to all the time. I'll, I'll hold myself back. <laughs> okay, so now, you know, this is where I would go under the rinse, okay? But what we're going to do is this. And hopefully, because I'm going to be using this rinse water a couple of times, then I take a, usually the dish towel. Yes, I do this in the kitchen, and yes, my wife doesn't know I do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> put that down there for right now. So, once I get, get it dry, I'm going to try to get my hands dry. 
I, I, you know, I look at it to make sure that I did get all of the the gross fingerprints and uh, uh, thing. This is where you also find a lot of times that oh, I scratched the copper, or the copper I bought something that would scratch copper. This is usually when you find it. Now it's, it won't be so. It's not a bad idea when you move to the the next step. Uh, I'm using a piece of quarter-inch plywood here to, to use a buffer. Um, I'm probably not going to do it today, but I might put a buffer down. Uh, for a double-sided board, I definitely would, so I wouldn't scratch up one side while I was working on the other. But here What's I'm just, the effect of a scratch? Well, if it's deep enough, it, um, you know, it, the it, 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 it can, well, it could, but it, it, it also it causes a hot spot because uh, we're talking, and we'll talk about this later, this is one ounce per square foot copper board. And so the next step in the cleanup is acetone. This is, uh, so I just, a, a can of acetone, if it's used solely for this purpose, would last you two lifetimes. Um, so then I'm going to go down here, oh, oops, I'm going to wipe it down, and now you say, well Doug, you didn't wear safety gloves on acetone. <laughs> acetone is pretty benign, benign, but it would be a smart thing to use for safety gloves. Don't smoke by yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, on the back pattern, I cut it so that the edge pattern is all, otherwise, I cut outside of the edge boundary. So there's a black square around the pattern. All right. Now, normally, like I said, I would sand through that when I got finished, but it also, Seems to do. It seems to help uh, define your pattern. I don't worry if it's complete all the way around, but it really helps me when I lay it up against the printed circuit board to know I can flip it on the back side. And if I see any of that black, that means my pattern is not on the board. I'm putting my cheaters on so that I can see. So it helps me position it. Uh, you notice I'm not. I'm just holding it. This is the nice thing about single-sided board is that it's pretty simple. All right. Doug, well, you have to worry about any contamination on the paper. On the it's paper. not a good idea to handle the paper, but I haven't run into a problem. I have touched it and haven't had a problem. So I don't, I'm not sure long run, you know, it's one of those things probably best practices is not to uh, do it. You want to make sure your iron is hot. I have, I have at this point, because the iron turned off, uh, uh, tried to do it with a cold iron and it's not fun. Now one trick you can do is you can put it on five, which is the next to six, which is the highest you can go. And then right before you do the iron, turn it from five to six, it will turn on. And that's one way to, to get it going. All right. So at this point, I'm only one, the one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to go down and hold it against the board like this and put a lot of pressure on it. Because if I do that, all I accomplish is squeezing the pattern, and it will be undefined. Okay. So that's not a really good thing. Okay. So I'm going to just use the tip. And if you look real close at the tip, you can see it's shiny. That's because the the Teflon coating has been rubbed off by somebody who used it inappropriately. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use just the tip. And again, I, since I've been talking, I'm going to just check. So did you do that out. intentionally or just wore out? They wore out. Okay. So when you use your wife's iron, okay. you expect pain. <laughs> All right. That's why another reason that if you can get a freebie somewhere, that's great. All right. Now at this point, I'm going to start in a corner and rub down, just using the tip, okay? I'm going to make sure, uh, I actually moved it, let's see that my hand turns right down. Okay. 
But what I'm trying to do here, I'm not going to be going real too hard, but what I'm trying to do is go enough over the pattern to stick the pattern to the C PCB board so I don't have to hold it so, so good, okay? Do you have any idea how hot you're getting there? I tried to measure it, Will, the and actual I couldn't get color. a... I don't have the instrument to get a really good, good reading. I just put it on six. I mean, do you have any idea how hot the color actually gets? Uh, I, I have read that on the web, but I don't remember what it is. I want to say it's around 150, but I, I don't don't quote me on that because I don't really know. <coughs> would a heat gun be a well? A heat gun wouldn't give you pressure, would it? No. You know, they do have the monocoat irons, which I'm sure that uh, you know about. And they have a little more precise adjustment where you can set it, but you could use an infrared sensor to measure it too, which would be nice. Okay, now, how hard are you pushing? Not, not tremendously hard, okay? Because if I push too hard, I could right. smear the pattern. But I am pushing down. You are pushing I am pushing down. And I'm going along the edge. I found that what you want to do is define the edge. All right, so 